Hello everybody and welcome to today's video. My name is Inez. Today I want to speak to you about depression and loneliness and as a believer how we can go through these things sometimes and how to come out of it in Jesus name. So let's pray. So Holy Spirit I ask you to come right now and speak through me to your sons and daughters in Jesus name. Amen. So God bless you all. I love you all. All the subscribers and all the people tuning in. Thank you for all your love, all your support and all your prayers and everything else you do. I love you. God bless you. And I'm always praying for you too in Jesus name. So this is a topic that um, I know because um, since a very early age, early teens, maybe even before that, all I know before I got saved was I was just depressed. Um, I didn't know why I was here. I hated life. Um, I didn't want to be here. I had this tremendous void inside of me. Obviously, I didn't know the Lord. I grew up a Catholic. I knew of God, but I didn't know God. I didn't know who Jesus was. I didn't know the love of God. I didn't know any of that. I never read the Bible, just snippets here and there in school, you know, nothing much. But I didn't know why I was here and I grew up very lonely um, very isolated, rejected, it, just a pit of darkness, that's all I can say to you, that's, that's how I felt. Okay, but um, if you listen to my testimony there on the, the videos, I share about what happened to me then, that um, I just grew into a pit of despair of total heaviness and depression. Like even speaking about it now, it's just, it's horrible because I hated it. And that's all I knew was darkness. I would wake up hating life. I would wake up thinking, oh, another day. I would just hate my life. People would leave me. Um, I'd be so rejected. I'd be offended. Uh, I, was, I was lonely, isolated on the inside. Um, but then I got saved. And then the Lord started to teach me who I was in him, who he created me to be, who I was and who he was. And then the enemy, the lies of the enemy. But anyway, I'm going to get to that now in a few moments. But I know what it's like to be totally and utterly depressed and heavy. And then what it's like to come out of it and how God opens your eyes. But when I was depressed and heavy, before I got saved, I turned to alcohol and pills and I was just a fit of despair and loneliness and I wanted to die all the time. And everything out of my mouth was negativity and debt. And all I could see was darkness. All I could see was a wall. There was no point in me being here. There was no point in me being alive. I was a terrible mother. I was a terrible person. Um, there's no point. That's the way I would speak. But it was like this cloud of heaviness over me. Like, if you know what I mean, if you've gone through this yourself or you are right now, it's like a, a, a cloak of heaviness that just sits on you. You have um, no energy, uh, no desire to do anything. You don't want to get out of bed. You've, you've, I had no emotion. That's the only way I could describe this. I had no... Somebody could tell a joke or something could happen and I would have no, it was actually scary, you know, or, or something would happen and I'd have no empathy. It was really scary, you know, and um, this pit that I was in. Um, I could just see no joy in anything, no joy. If we went places, if we did things, there was no enjoyment in me. I just had no, I just had a face on me all the time, just a total despair heaviness and but i felt so lonely on the inside so empty so that was the void that was when i needed jesus that's when i needed god to fill that void okay but then when i got saved it's your spirit you know that gets saved you get awakened you get you're saved you know you're, you're reborn but then there was the soul then there was i had to renew my mind then the Lord had to teach me who I was, okay? But then <clears throat> when this happened and then when I went through this and overcame it then, you know, you go through life and just because you're a Christian doesn't mean you, go, you don't go through things, you don't go through the wilderness, you don't go through trials, tribulations. We do, okay? 
but you have to remember that you're victorious that if you're still here on this earth there is a plan and a purpose for your life and every other thing that comes to you that comes to your mind that you're seeing it's a lie from the enemy so what it is it's it's the way you're thinking and it's what you're saying and it's what you're receiving also you know there's like rejection you know if people don't agree with you and um, if people don't like you they cast you out like we have to look at the way jesus was when he walked here on this earth the the things that happened to him here you know and then we moan about them when they happen to us but we we have overcome these things through jesus christ he has given us the victory to overcome these things and overcome debt and heaviness and the things of the enemy because he's given you power and authority to overcome these things and then it's the case of having faith and believing it and believing the word of god when jesus says when god says I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. But yet you have that feeling of loneliness. If your family left you, if friends left you, if something happened in your church, you feel loneliness. You feel a heaviness or one day all of a sudden you wake up and there's just this tremendous weight, this heaviness, this despair, this rejection. How is that coming? Yes, the enemy attacks us with these things, but it's also our train of thought. It's what you're thinking. So just say if somebody said something to you, I don't like you anymore, I don't like the way you do this, get out of here. What are you gonna do? You're gonna replay that over and over in your mind and over and over in your mind and you'll probably start crying and you'll get heavy, you'll probably get a headache and then you go to bed crying. It's just an example if you understand what I mean. Because of my past, all I did was think about everything that happened to me, the beatings, the hurts, the abuse, the things that I did, the horrible things then that I did. So I was condemning myself along with listening to the lies of the enemy. So it was tremendous heaviness. And in my past, I tried to drown everything out with a substance, with something, but it just made me worse. Okay, so it was all that combined. And then there was people leaving me. Um, I was doing horrible things. I was becoming a horrible, nasty person. I was the most negative person you could be around if it was a beautiful day i would find something wrong yeah well and this is the way i would talk well i don't see the point that i don't think that was funny i don't want to go here because i don't like this person because i was so negative so when i got saved my soul the poison the baggage the bitterness the anger the condemnation and the despair the loneliness god had to show me through his word I only got healed by the word of God, not by somebody saying something to me, not by me sitting down in front of a doctor and getting pills, getting prescribed things, um, or sitting down to a counsellor or a psychiatrist for 20 years. Now, if somebody's gone through that, that's fair enough, okay? But that wasn't for me because I went through all these things and they did nothing for me. I would leave worse. I'd come back worse. So it had to be God. It had to be true God's word. I had to believe when the Lord said, I'm with you. You're not by yourself, you're not alone. That's a lie from the enemy. I love you. I have come to give you life and life more abundantly. And I'd read that and I'd go mad at God and say, well, I'm not happy. <laughs> I'd look at someone else getting blessed and I'd get mad. Somebody um, who say something to me and then they'd get blessed, I would get so mad. I would get so jealous and envious and angry and Bleh. this is when I first got saved. So just because I got saved didn't mean I was perfect. I had stuff, poison inside of me that God had to change through his word. So brothers and sisters, when you read the word of God, are you believing in the word of God? Do you trust God? Are you walking by faith? Are you walking by your feelings? You know that you have a choice when you wake up in the morning. You have a choice to wake up and it could be cloudy and it could be raining outside, snowing outside, really windy, stormy and your kids are crazy all over the place or something's happening in your marriage or, or something in your family and you could wake up and go, oh, oh today is just going to be so horrible. Oh, And as soon as you open your mouth starting like this, you're going to have a crappy day. You're going to have a horrible day. You will. Because it's what you're saying. It's what you're speaking. So the two things that God had to do with me was, number one big time was my mouth. 
they had to change the way I spoke because the vulgar, the nasty, disgusting, negative ways, um, like people who were around me would go away, like just not wanting to be around me because I was so down and heavy and poor me. I had a self-pity attitude. If somebody didn't help me then, <laughs> they rejected me. So it's like all these little cousins basically come around depression and heaviness. I was expecting people to help me. And this is the truth, okay? So it doesn't matter if you disagree with me or not, that's absolutely fine. But this is the way it was when I was in this heaviness, this depression. I needed people to come down to my level. If they didn't, if they were happy, I had to say so, like something would come out of my mouth to dampen their joy. It was horrible. It's just pure nasty. I would try to change the atmosphere. Like yeah, you could feel the heaviness when I'd walk into a room because I was like, eh. everyone had to be poor me. Oh, and as you get through this. So I went through this for years. You know, and even people in my family were like, I mean, come on. Like seriously, there's only so much we can help you with. You know, and then I was going to doctors, I was taking pills, and I was secretly drinking in the background. It was crazy, okay? Let me give you some words, okay? Now, these are really, like, heavy words, okay? Now, the reason why I'm doing this video is just because the Lord has put it on my heart, because there are many Christians who are going through this when you actually don't have to be. You really don't, Okay? And I can say this because it's something that God has taken me through. You know, there's a wilderness. You know, there's times you can go through things, but you cannot stay there. There's not a hope can you be there for years upon years upon years. You don't have to be. You have a choice to believe in the word of God and to act out in faith. But just to receive it, you have to receive it. You know, because somebody can be there for you. They can do everything they possibly can for you and it won't change. It will not change because it has to be us on the inside. Also, yes, it does. Because then everything else is, well, if only I had this, I'll be better. If only my family were saved. If only my husband loved me more. If only my kids treated me with respect. If only I was accepted in a church. If only I had more money, I'd be more happy. You know, if only this didn't happen to me in the past, I'd be a different person. Really? Are you hanging on to your past? Are you hanging on to grudges? I mean, there's Christians who are so critical, so condemning to others, judgmental, and also condemning themselves and looking at their past. Something somebody said to them 15 years ago. Somebody heard them when they were a kid. They have this root of bitterness and you talk to someone and this, bleh, it all comes out of their mouth. You know, you can be a Christian, yeah, you can be saved. But then there's the inside. It's what defiles you that comes out. What's inside of you? What way do you speak? What way do you speak over yourself? And you know when you go through these wilderness times or these times where no one's around even. Everybody goes through times of isolation. I don't care what people say. They're happy all the time. They're good all the time. But you'll go through things. And some things hurt in life. But it depends on your response. How you react. You know the Bible does say to rejoice in tribulation. <laughs> you know when, when someone's like or you're in prison um, for false accusations or someone's attacking you, slandering you, gossiping about you behind your back and the Bible says to rejoice. Jesus says rejoice I have overcome the world. Be happy, be joyful and I used to read that I get so angry. Well I'm not happy, how can you make me be happy when I'm not happy? Have you not seen what they did to me? And God's like, hey, yeah, so get up, get on with your day. And I would fight with God. This was years ago. I would fight with God. You've no idea what they said to me. Blah, 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 blah. And the filth that would come out of my mouth. And it's like God would stand there and go, hmm, just let her have a little rant there for a few moments. Are you finished now? And then the Holy Spirit would say, are you done? And I would hear him saying this and then I'd laugh and I'd go, Lord, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Lord, I'm sorry, please forgive me. And I'd go into this when I would speak negativity. But it was a training process. It's not like, boom, you're a perfect Christian. You're so spiritual and holy. No, you're going to go through things. 
there's the baggage, there's the poison, there's what defiles you. Remember Jesus talks about the heart? Oh, my heart was filthy, nasty, still to this day. I have to repent for things. I ask for God's grace to get me through today because I can't do anything by myself. I need God every single day, every moment of the day, the Holy Spirit to lead me and guide me. And I need his grace. And I am light. I am a spirit. I am filled with the word of God. So I should be walking and hearing and obeying the word of God. If God tells me to love people, even if though they persecute me, disagree with me, call me names, they turn their back on me, they um, just do nasty things to me. Does Jesus not tell me to forgive them? Has Jesus forgiven you? Why don't you forgive someone who has really hurt you to the point where you just want to... Mm, because we're commanded to love. We're commanded to forgive. There's so many of us Christians who hang on. And I'm into the past. Hold grudges. And then when they see someone they go. Oh, I'm talking to them. I don't like that person. I don't like that pastor. I don't like that church. I don't like the way they said this. Yeah I don't like that president. Because of what he did years ago. I don't like him. Just think about what's coming out of your mouth. Or if, just say for an example, if, if there was a betrayal in your marriage, you know, there's just no communication there, you can't stand the sight of each other. The only way that you can change or, or, or a friend that hurt you or somebody or in your workplace who doesn't like you and they're giving you a hard time, the only way is by God's grace and he gives you the empowerment. All of a sudden you, you will see the fruits changing in you. And all of a sudden you'll feel compassion for people. You'll want to help people. You'll just want to love people. Because of God's grace. Because he has told us to love those who are unlovable. Not to condemn. And then there's Christians with their, their bags of stones. And they're throwing stones at themselves. And they're like, yeah, well you said this yesterday. Yeah, well I don't like that pastor because you see what they did five years ago. I don't like that person because and you're throwing stones. Do you remember the story with the, the, the stones and Jesus says, Have any of you sinned before? Take up your stone. Go on. Take up your stone. It's exactly what some Christians do. Christians, are you really a Christian? Are you really hearing the word of God? Walking and obeying the gospel. Not, not a small bit of the gospel. All of the gospel. Love your enemies. Talk life. Speak life. Speak the word. Speak the word over yourself. When God says, I love you. You are beautiful. You are victorious. You are more than a conqueror. You're amazing. You're my son. You're my daughter. I died for you so that you could live. And then we stand there and we say, well, I'm nothing. I can't do this. Um, I might as well not be here. I am a terrible mother. I can't do this. There's no point. I'm not going to church because I don't like these people. I'm not going to church because they don't like me. I don't like the church. I don't like... Can you imagine what you're actually saying? You are speaking debt. You are speaking negativity. Coarse words over yourself, over people. I'll never forgive that person and my family what they did to me. I will never forgive this person. I'll never forgive myself. Look at Paul. Look what Paul did. He beat Christians. He stood there and watched people getting killed. He held their jackets. And remember then when he got saved and Peter and all the guys were like, hey, hey stay away from him. I, I don't believe he's saved. He can't be. Do you not see what he did? Do you not see what he did to our brothers and sisters? Have a little think when we get saved and a drug dealer, somebody, maybe like President Donald Trump, and all of the Christians are like, ah, oh, throwing their stones. Well, the media said this, he's this and he's that. Or somebody comes into your church and they're dressed like in a little mini skirt or their chest is hanging out. Just saying, what way do you speak? Oh my goodness, oh, disgraceful, carry on oh, in this church. They should be covering up. Do you speak like that? Do you think like that? What comes out of your mouth? What's in your heart? 
do you look at yourself in the mirror and go oh my goodness you're just so ugly today you're just so horrible today i can't walk out like this i'm horrible now the reason why i'm saying all these things it's because it's examples how we speak how we think sometimes what way are you thinking what way do you treat people what way are you speaking over yourself it's the negativity it's the poison you know and what god is saying is like you know take down see the bag of stones that you have thrown at other people thrown at your pastors thrown at the church the government the people around you and you think you're so holy and and i'm the best christian around oh yeah you know there is people like that too holy you know everybody else is wrong but you're the only right one and voicing their opinions all over the place throwing stones everywhere you know causing strife and next of all everybody's like this and you're thinking you're like the best thing since sliced bread i just have to put that out there because there are so many who are speaking bad about themselves they're talking bad about the bride of christ that jesus died for who he loves and you know even somebody who does come into the church or somebody around your community who you don't like or they're dressed in a certain way how do you know what God is thinking about them, what God really sees in that person, you know, and then we're voicing all this filth outside, you know, and then you're going through things and then you're wondering why you're feeling like this sometimes, and all these thoughts are coming into your head and condemnation and negative thoughts about this person, negative thoughts about that person, but especially about yourself, and all the lies then that the enemy feeds, you're no good, nobody likes you, you're rejected. Nobody likes you in church. Don't go to church. You're nothing. You're used to, you know, all these thoughts. And people believe them. So I remember I was going through this. Uh, I had to say all that. Now, if you're offended or you disagree with me, that's absolutely fine. No problem. i water off my back. But I have to say these things, okay? Because these things are things that I have gone through and things that God has walked me through and has renewed my mind through the word of God and still every single day have to catch myself okay especially how I speak about others the bride of Christ and myself is very important then what I'm thinking what I am letting inside this mind inside my head to go down into the belly in my heart and be careful what comes out read about the heart read about what defiles you you know murderous thoughts you know envy and about murder as well you know if you don't like someone if you hate someone if you say horrible things what does the bible actually say about murder if you hate someone if you have a grudge against somebody if you're holding someone um who did something to you like 10 years ago or two years ago or something or somebody robbed your money something like this you know and you just hate the person you know, Jesus says, you know, that's like a murderer in your heart. You know, we think, you know, if you look at the law, oh my God, that was terrible. But if you look what Jesus said, you know, if you think that way, that's murder in your heart. If you look at a woman with lust in your heart, if you're like, hey, and you're going off and you're watching porn. What does Jesus say about that? That's adultery. You know, if you're married and you're sitting there watching porn secretly, you know, when the person's gone out. Or whatever it is you're doing to yourself just be careful so with depression and heaviness all right and even people who i loved so much i have tried so much to help there was a certain person in my life years ago and this person and i knew was going through such a hard time and you know when someone is there's something wrong you know especially someone in your family or if they're not getting out of bed if they're just you know there's something wrong and I spent so many months just trying to help this person. And if I was going somewhere, you know, I'd say to this person, you know, come on, do you want to come with us? You know, do you want to do this? You know, trying to help the person. You could put all of your energy into somebody, all of your money into somebody. But if they don't want to change, you know, you have to move forward. There's times that God will say, leave them to me and go forward. Because all your time, all your energy, and then you're getting down, and you're like, oh, and your day is dampened, you know, and you're like, oh, you know, but if somebody is like this for years and years and years and years, and they're just not getting up, 
just sometimes there's times you know that that you have to just walk away you have to take a step back you know because people will depend on you as well and they'll expect you to be there and hurt people hurt people you know and I mean I was hurt by certain people then because I had to move on like I had to go forward not that I dropped people this is a person in my family I'm speaking about and then they lash out at you and it's all oh, your fault and then you're like whoa and there's like big strife and division and everything you know and you're like trying to help this person and you're going out of your way to help this person but it's nothing got to do with you this is where the conflict can happen as well in friendships families churches you know that's why when people are hurt they're wounded offended you know and you have to tread on eggshells you know in case you hurt the person or say something wrong you know and they're like oh look what you did to me look what you said to me and it's true because this is the way i was and if somebody looked at me wrong, if they said the wrong thing, I'd, uh, and I'd be like in a pit of despair. I'd cry all night. It was ridiculous. But it had to be God. It had to be God, his word, to shine through me, to get us filled out of me. Because I wasn't just hurting myself. I was hurting other people. And even when this got said to me, you know, I was like, you're saying it's all my fault. Why are you saying it's me? I mean, people couldn't even talk to me. It was crazy, you know, and so God had to do this work in my soul. He, he had to get rid of all this poison, this baggage, the way I spoke about myself, number one. What I taught of God, especially what I was saying about people and people trying to help me and then saying a judgmental, critical condemnation things to others as well. Oh, this, the stuff that came out of me was unreal, I'm telling you. So the reason why I'm saying this is because I know God is trying to help people out there right now and people are going through these things you know and when there's times of wildernesses don't think that you have to stay there you know i mean we have come out of this and people are some people say you know oh well you have to go through it you, you know you, you, it, there's a time of this you're gonna go and people are like yeah 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 and they like the fact as well of staying there and they want people to just like you know, oh, let's stay in the wilderness for a while, you know, yes, we all go through these things, you know, I know how you feel, and let's talk about all our bad things, you know, for, for two hours, and then you're just totally drained. You have to speak the word of God. The word of God is power. It's life. It's light. Okay? Listen to these words. Despair. Loneliness. Depression. Discouragement rejection lack of energy heaviness fatigue tiredness you've no emotion empathy tears no peace no joy horrible thoughts suicidal thoughts feeling a failure procrastination feel like giving up isolation darkness abandonment negativity gloom no motivation sleeping pills hopelessness doctors self-pity offense lies there's a reason why i'm saying this okay does that not drag you down by me even saying all that you know um in my past i was totally totally suicidal i just like i said i'd wake up think how will i kill myself how will i do this where will i leave the kids if i do this that's all that was going through my mind and everything that people did to hurt me it's also you're focused on yourself your eyes are not on God at all. It's all in you. You have to think about that. Okay. I was on all these pills then try to get better. I went to counsellors and I was just sitting there. I was coming out ten times worse when I would go to these things. All I would think about, I'd focus on what this person said. I'd focus on what this person did over and over. It was like just a broken record going in my mind. And I actually, that's why I wanted to die years ago because I couldn't stand what was going on in my head and I used to say that it just if my head would just be quiet but then I got saved but then I had to learn how to apply the word so even though I was saved I had no idea why I was still like this and I'd look at other people being blessed and be happy and I couldn't understand it how was I not there yet so it took a long time um for me to believe this, to get this in my spirit, 
to understand, to believe the word of God. So I want to ask you today, do you want to get better? Do you want to go forward? Would you like to stay and pitch your tent in the wilderness for another month, another couple of years? Or would you like to get better? And the one thing that I found is, you know, especially with me, people could be there for me. And I remember there were certain people who were always, always there and I liked it. When I actually think back now, it was like, yeah, yeah, they're there and they're rubbing me in there, they're helping me and they're helping me. And you could see them kind of going, you know, like we want to enjoy our day. Come on, Anais, you know. But then if they did go and enjoy the day, I'd get mad and I'd get offended. You know, why, why won't you sit with me? Why won't you be depressed with me? And it's a reality because I went through it. Okay, so let's move to when I got saved. To the training, to the years then of God dealing with what was on the inside. You see, because your spirit, you're in this body. We're going to be changed in the twinkling of an eye, okay? But this thing here, and the heart, and this up here, the battle, big time is in the mind. And you can listen to the lies of the enemy. You can talk negative all you want all over yourself, if you like. And point and throw stones at other people all you want. Or are you going to be a hearer and a doer of the word? Are you going to believe God when he said, you're not alone because I never leave you or forsake you? You know, I think as well that um, we get so dependent. It's like, you know, as a Christian, you need to have Christian friends. You need to be around certain people. You need to have loads of family around you. You need to have a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a husband or a wife. You need to have someone. Can you not be content in yourself, in Christ? Or do you have to have people around you? This is also another thing. I had to have a boyfriend all the time. I, otherwise I was alone. I had to have 10 people around me and drinking and parties all the time because otherwise I was alone. Or was I alone? Just, just think about that. I love even being by myself now. I love going for walks. I love walking out, going to the gym, breathing in the fresh air, spending time with God in the ward, praising God, worshipping. I don't need to have five or ten people around me or a boyfriend or a husband. Great if God brings one along. But I'm content in myself with Christ. Because I know he's with me. I hear him every day. I feel him every day. Even if I don't, I know he's there. Because I believe him. And I see his miracles every day. But when you get to that place, it is so rewarding and refreshing and satisfying. Because then you're not running around trying to fit in with cliques and churches, in, in courses, in colleges, schools, around people. You know, it's like this hunger you're looking for. This, did Jesus fill that void inside of you? Or are you still trying to fill it with sex, with people, with whatever? Oh, I, I need to listen to this. I need to look at this. I need to be around here. I need to go here. Otherwise, I'm lonely. I'm, I'm isolated. I'm depressed. I'm sad. Just kind of think about that just for a second. Right. So even God said that to me, you know, about just resting in him and knowing that he's with me always. And I don't have to be dependent on people because you'll have unmet expectations from people. You'll be getting offended. If somebody says the wrong thing to you, you'd be all over the place. You'd be wounded. You know, and then God has to heal all that. You know, but, you know, we can be like waves. You know, you can be okay one minute, depressed the next minute, up and down, like bipolar. I had all these things. So whether you disagree with me or not, that's absolutely fine. But these are things that I went through. And this is what God had shown me. And then he had to teach me to come out of it. Only through his word. So if you're not believing in his word. And if you're looking for prayer all over the place. You're going to this one for prayer. You didn't really like that prayer. So you're going to this one for prayer. You don't like that pastor. So you're going to this pastor. You need five people to pray for this. Do you need five people to pray for you? Do you need prayer for the same thing over and over and over again? Or do you believe the word of God. And speak and declare it over yourself. Because God's word is powerful, it's sharp, it's alive, it works, it does. You just have to believe it. Yes, we can get prayer, <clears throat> but you have to know that you're anointed. You have to know that there's power. 
that there is authority that Jesus Christ gave you, are you using it? You see, the enemy doesn't want you to know who you are. It's all about your identity. It's all about knowing who you are. Because if you don't know who you are, the devil will have a field day in your mind. He'll use people around you. When do you get hurt when you're saved? I don't get hurt by people in the world. It's people on the inside that throw stones at me. That try to wound me. They can try. But you see, I know who I am in Christ. And God makes you mature and he makes you stronger. Just like Jesus. Jesus just went from town to town. You never read where Jesus cowered in the corner. Oh, they all hate me. They cast me out of the city. They tried to push me off the cliff. They don't like me here. Half the disciples left. They don't believe what I'm saying, God. Ugh. I didn't read anything about Jesus being like that. Jesus knew exactly who he was. And the enemy would say, if you're the son of God. If. And then all the Pharisees were trying to question him and test him and... Um, they didn't believe him and even his disciples were like and half of them then left and as well it's like you know you don't need people around you all the time you know people will disappoint you people will drop you people will hurt you do not let stuff like this affect you do not let what people do or if they disappoint you you know drag you down move forward we are people in the army of God, the army of Jesus Christ, you have to go forward. Don't put your tent up in the wilderness and stay there and go, okay, I'm coming out of the wilderness. Okay, I'm going to stay in the wilderness. This person said something to me. Oh no, I'm in a fit of despair. Or you wake up in the morning and you're just like, you feel. Do you ever get that total, I mean, it's like a cloak of heaviness. Now, this is what I went through. And it's just like your mind is being bombarded. And all of a sudden you're like, there's no point in getting up. I'll stay in bed all day. Nobody likes me anyway. Well. And you're just walking around going. Uh, uh, I just feel so horrible today. I won't go to church today. They don't like me there anyway. <laughs> I used to be like this. I'm serious. You have a choice. When you wake up in the morning to go. No. Get off me. Do you know as soon as you do that, it will leave? I promise you this because God had to train me. It's a renewing of your mind with the word of God. Speak it. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Praise the Lord. Oh, it's raining and the storm is outside. I'm going to have a great day anyway. Praise the Lord. What will I do, Lord? Let's do something. <laughs> Just renew your mind. Start speaking life. When you start to speak life, you'll find that will lift off you nobody can help you people can be there to encourage you to lift you i can do what i can for you you could be depressed for 10 years and i could say every nice thing to you and mean it but if you don't believe it on the inside there's nothing anyone can do it has to be god it has to be you to believe what god is saying to you okay so don't depend on people don't put all of your expectations people are going to disappoint people will hurt people will leave you they'll drop you it'll seem like they're there which even friends will can drop you like that you know and not everything is rosy in churches all the time okay we have to love people people will hurt you okay but you, you have to understand who you are in christ that these things won't get to you then you won't be getting offended you won't be feeling rejected than when you do get hurt, okay? But then if there's stuff from the past, this baggage, this heaviness, yes, look, God loves you. God wants to heal you. God sees when you cry, God sees your pain. It's not that God is like, snap out of it. God wants to heal you, but you have to want to let him. Okay, look, I wanna change. It's like me when um, I was an alcoholic. I had to be me to go, Look, I want to change. Get me out of this, Lord. I don't want to live like this anymore. It's like if you're giving up smoking. Or whatever it is you're doing. Watching pornography. Whatever it is. It has to be you to say, okay, look, this stops today. This stops right now. Because like I said, you can go years or months. Whatever it is you're going through. Whether it's loneliness, depression. If you're grieving over if you've lost somebody. You know, it's not that you can snap out of that. You go through these things. But as long as you don't stay there, it's like in the wilderness, don't pitch your tent. 
there, okay? It's like, I can tell you all the crazy things that happen to me, that get said to me, that has been done to me. To me, they're in the past. If someone said something to me yesterday, it's like, well, that was yesterday. Whereas I used to carry things and I'd carry them and I'd be like, yeah, this happened to me five years ago. They said this to me yesterday. Oh, I'm so hurt. I'm so wounded. Oh. And I'd act like this and I'd speak like this. I couldn't go forward because I was carrying all this baggage. And God would say to me bit by bit, lay it down. Put it down. Because you're not going to go to the next level, to the next stage, unless you lay it down. Put it down. So anyway, that's what I had to say. So let's get into to scriptures, okay? So in, in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation, creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. You see, I can say scripture to you. I can say it, but you have to believe this. Do you believe this? Do you believe that God loves you? Do you believe that you're special, that you're here on this earth for a reason? That God has a plan and purpose for your life. There's nothing I can do if you say no. There's nothing I can do if you're like, well, I don't know. Okay, this is where that has to change. This is where you have to go. No, I do. No, I, I do believe this. But not just for this couple of minutes on this video. From now on. Take up the word of God, whether you feel like it or not. I am a child of the Most High God. No weapon of war formed against me will prosper. I can do this. Christ in me the hope of glory. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me within. Lord, I ask you for the grace, Lord. Help me not to be rejected. Lord, I ask you for the grace. Help me not to care what people think. Lord, I ask you for the grace, Lord, to um, not have these bad thoughts. You see, when you ask God for specific things, you'll find that you change. And the fruit starts to, to bloom. You know, the, the, the new wine skin begins to show and people want to be around you then because they see this person is strong you know this, this person knows who they are but if you don't people will see that as well and it's like out of the heart you know the issues of life you know so it's what you're letting inside your heart and it's what defiles you as well what jesus said comes out so if you think and there's proverbs as well that says you know you are what you say what you think I'm not good at that. I'll never be able to do this. I oh, know I'll never be able to speak publicly. I'm, I'm too afraid. Don't, don't ask me to do that. I can't do that. Oh no, I'll, I'll never get out of depression. You know, it, it's just something that God has put on me. You know, it's, it's a sickness, a cross I have to bear. You know, maybe I'm meant to go through this. Are you sure about that? You know, what What do you listen to? What, what are you letting go inside your spirit and what are you saying? So Jesus says, right, from, if you look at my past, like I said, the depression, the heaviness, the way I treated people, what I was saying, what was coming out of my mouth. To getting saved, yes, my spirit was saved, but now there was this soul, this baggage, the way I was thinking, what I was speaking. God was like, and I was going like this in the wilderness and this in the wilderness for years, and I was going around and around and around. Until it's like a light went off and I went, oh, I wasn't believing in the word. I was looking at everybody else. I was focused on everybody else, what they were saying to me, how I should have been treated. And God is like, you know, you're responsible for your walk. Work out your own salvation. You know, never mind about anybody else. What is if, if something's happening there or something's happening here focus on yourself in, in your mind and what way you're speaking what way you're thinking you know you can throw opinions at everybody else you can judge other people but what about you yourself jesus says take the beam out of your own eye okay so never mind anybody else just watch your own walk watch what's coming out of your mouth your heart and let god deal with it okay so you're a new creature and you know, there's Christians who say they're Christians, but they're not obeying the gospel. They're not loving people. You know, judgmental and critical Pharisees. Hypocrites, what Jesus said. That's not just me being nasty. Jesus said that. And that was me when I first got saved. And I'd look at everybody else and I'd point out the flaws in everybody else. And God was like, hey. So anyway... 
So my mouth had to get saved. My soul had to get saved. My mind had to be renewed. In John 10.10, 10, the thief comes to kill, steal and destroy. But Jesus said that I have come to give you life and have it more abundantly. You know, live your life. Get up each day. Make the choice and say, I am going to live today. I am going to speak life over myself over my children even if your marriage is in bits speak life into it if your child has rebelled or something speak a life to your child don't nag don't control don't speak the negativity it's exactly what the enemy wants you to do if we open doors like this you know it's we've done it ourselves. so it's important what we say and it's important that you're not going by all the... Yes, we live in a dark world. It's terrible. But you're the light. Let your light shine for everybody to see. Even people in your family, people in your workplace, wherever you are. Okay? They need to see Jesus in you. You know? And when we get saved, it's not like, you know, you're living this, this terrible life that everything is a tribulation. Everything is just horrendous and hard and all the time. I mean... Seriously, when I look back when I first got saved, I was just the most negative person. Yeah, well, I'm going through this and I'm going through that and not never gets better. No, I couldn't live my life. And I think I shared this on another video. I, I was sitting on the beach one day. This is years ago. And I was so sad and everyone else was being blessed and I was going through this horrendous thing. My family wasn't talking to me. Friends left me. I was going through this. And it's what you have to go through as a Christian sometimes. But I was living in so much like, uh, and I was so heavy. And I was sitting on the beach and I was looking out at my children playing in the water. And I was just like, oh, my life is so horrible. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, I am not going to bring you forward unless you learn to live your life and to be happy. I'm going to teach you to enjoy yourself. And I listened and I'm like, enjoy myself? Do you have you no idea what I'm going through? So I was talking back like this to the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit didn't say anything and that was it. So I pondered on that and then years went by and God would just, it was, see God goes with you. You know, he gives you a choice but it's up to you to take it. It's like if I was to give you a hundred dollars, a hundred euro right now and you'd be like, oh no, 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 it's okay. No, it's okay. If I'm like, no, here, I actually want to give it to you. And you're like, no, 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 I, I can't. And it's like, well, okay then. You know, and somebody's giving you something. And Jesus is like, I'm after giving you life. You know, and you look at Paul, you look at the disciples and they're being beaten. They get thrown out of um, uh, cities and towns, you know, and they're singing. They're praising the Lord in jail, being beaten after being whipped. Look at Jesus. He'd sit down laughing with Lazarus and, and Mary and all them after he was just condemned and, and nearly cast out of a city or, or, you know, the way they treat him. And Jesus is there just having a great time with the disciples. And he loved speaking with them and, and laughing. And that's something that that I love to talk with, with, with Jesus. You know, I, I'd love to be sitting at a table, you know, and chat to you the way you chat to the disciples and Mary. And, and what did you laugh about? And, you know, little stuff like that. They're like my conversations that I have with the Lord. You know, because... My prayers were all the time, it wasn't even talking to God, it wasn't a relationship, it was just a moaning. I would murmur, moan and complain all the time. I, I couldn't even see the joy, I couldn't see happiness anywhere. But God had to open my eyes. And even though you're going through hard times, you can be joyful. It's the joy of the Lord, it's the fruit of the Spirit. It's in you. Love is in you. Kindness is in you. Self-control is in you. Yes, self-control. It's one of the fruits of the Spirit. So if you're saying, I can't stop this, I can't stop that. Yes, you can. You actually can. Okay? <clears throat> it's just renewing your mind, that's all. Matthew eleven twenty nine and um, 28, sorry. Jesus said, come to me, all you who, who labour, who are heavy laden, heavy burdened. You know, Jesus wants to love you Jesus Jesus wants to love you Jesus loves you but he wants you to rest in him to know his love to know that he's with you and that he never leaves you 
In 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all your cares and anxieties on him because he cares for you. So you know when we fear and we worry and we've all these bills coming in or if you have a, a course you're doing or a test you're doing, something and you're like, you're just worrying to bits and your kid has gone astray, your, your marriage is failing, you're like, oh, you're worried. Jesus is like, give it to me. Let me help you. He's there to help you. He loves you. You know, believe his word. In Philippians 4, 6, don't be anxious for anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ. That's very, very powerful there. Let your requests be made known. Lord, I'm going through this. It's not like God doesn't see. Of course he sees. But he says, let your requests be made known to him. And thank you, God, that you're, you're going to do this work. You know, even if your family are not saved like 10, 20 years later, you know, don't be worrying, don't be crying over that. God is doing the work, whether you see it or not. Because when you pray straight away, it's being done. You, ha you just have to believe his word. And God says that he'll guard your heart and your mind. How do you, how do you guard your mind? You know, like if you don't like someone or someone has said something to you or you see someone who hurt you. Or something's going on around you. And it's just replaying over and over and over. Or when you wake up in the morning and your mind is like going like this. And you're sitting there for 10 minutes going. Just just think about it, right? And you're, you're listening to all these thoughts going in your head. And you're like, oh yeah, oh yeah. And then you start talking. Yeah, maybe that's right. Maybe that's right. Or if you're listening to all these lies about somebody who did something yesterday. And all of a sudden you're, you feel it, don't you? on the inside and you feel angry and you feel agitated then you see the person you're like Ugh! and then it comes out or you, you you voice out your opinion or your your body starts to speak or you lash out it's because of what you were thinking i know it's hard for some people to kind of get this but it's just the way it is you have self-control you have the power inside of you to change things to change when you walk into a room to go, hey, let's do this today. Let's start this. Let's go here. Let's go to the beach today. Let's have fun. Or you can get up or walk into a room and go, hey, how are you today? Praise the Lord. I'm going through tribulation. In Psalm 23, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod, your staff, they comfort me. So when we go through hard times, difficult times, painful times, times where there are tears and, and just hardships, God is with you, okay? Now, if the Bible says you can rejoice in these things, it's only God that can do that in you, okay? So it's easy. It's like you're listening to me and probably looking on. Yeah, it's easy for her to say. I've been through these things. I've been through the most horrendous, horrible things. Even in my walk with Christ, there's no point me going into them. Everything. It's like what Jesus went through even, and you know, dying to the flesh, laying it all down. You know, it's painful when we go through the death of things. Especially with the flesh, when God is, you know, laying this down, lay that down, lay this down. And it can be painful, you see. And then his resurrection life then, his light is the one that lifts you and carries you on forward where you don't look back. And then a year later you go, oh my gosh, remember I was like this a year ago, I can't believe I went through that. And that's how you know you're maturing. That's how you know you're different when you're responding different to something that you would have lashed out at before or you would have um, treated this person horrible or nasty before and now all of a sudden you have compassion you, you have love that's how you know when you're going to a new level when you're maturing in christ when you're changing but if you're a christian for 20 years i'm being serious or five years and you're still the same think about what i'm saying today are you believing and hearing the word of god and obeying the gospel okay because it's not like god is not doing his work he is and he is speaking every single day it's just up to us. So I had a choice when I got saved to stay there, to be in this pit, or to live. And I remember one day I sat up and I said, no more. I am not living like this anymore. I want to live 
Lord, I want to live. And I was shouting, let me live, Lord. Teach me to be happy. I was never happy. My childhood. Are you kidding me? Look, I was so scared. I was terrified. I was beat up all the time. It was horrible. I was an alcoholic all the way through my early teens. All the way through my 20s. You know what I mean? So it's just... God had to teach me to be happy. And it wasn't overnight. Okay? So it was like um, progress. So in Proverbs 12, 25, anxiety in a man's heart weighs him down, but a good word makes him glad. So you can encourage people, people can encourage you, but the rest is up to you. You have a choice if you want to live or a choice to stay there. You know, it's like if um, it's the way you live as well. You know, um, if you're messy or um, live in a certain way or um, you tend to overeat, people who watch porn, people who smoke, it's just different things, okay? You have a choice if you want to change. It's just like people who go to jail. They can come out and they can hang out with the same friends again. Get back into drugs. Hang out with the same friends again. Get back into robbing. Teething. You know, it's it's who you hang around with. It's what you're listening to. And then you have a choice. It's just the way it is. So that's like when you get saved. You have to come away from things of the world. Jesus doesn't say isolate yourself. No. You have to let Christ live through you and love people, okay? But it's like if you're still hanging around, not that you can't hang around with them people, but it's like, I don't go clubbing, I don't go drinking. I can go to a pub and sit down and have a cup of tea or a coffee and talk to someone. That's absolutely fine. I can be around people who drink, but I don't talk the way they talk. I won't sit there and act like that. Like Jesus didn't go like and, and start to talk like in a sinful way. He was sharing the good news, the kingdom of God. Okay. So it's, it's what you're saying and it's as well. Okay. So in Hebrews 12 to look into Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. Did I just read that for the joy set before him? Have a little think about that. So you can depend on people. You can become, um, uh, you, you do get that self-pity as well. The poor me talk. So that was the way I was. And then if people didn't give me that, I'd, I'd get angry. And it would come out. So it's it's just, it's a nasty way to be as well, you know, and yes, it's darkness and yes, it's heaviness. Yes, people need help. I understand that I've been there. But if you won't change and you want to stay there and you're dependent on people to come down to your level, there's, there's a problem there. In 2 Timothy um, 1.6, wherefore I put you in remembrance that you store up the gift of God which is in you. What's that? Store up Jesus. There is love in you, there's peace in you, there's kindness, there's goodness, there's self-control. It's already in you. Jesus has anointed you. He's given you power. He's given you authority. Do you know that? So you have the power to love your enemies. You have the power to be nice to someone. Even if they just push you out of the way and get on the train ahead of you. You have the power to be nice. Go buy someone flowers. God bless you. Not in a, a filthy attitude, but in love. You can help someone who's down. You can be there, but you don't stoop down to their level. You be the lifter. Don't tear people down. Lift them. And if they don't want your help, absolutely fine. Move on. In Galatians 5.22, love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control, gentleness. They're all in you. Believe it. So just say if you're in, in a marriage and one is just not coming to Christ or they're nasty or uh, or your kids, what are you going to do? Are you going to tell people the way they are? Or are you going to show the love of Christ to them? That's how they'll come to Christ. By you. In Psalm 34, 17, the righteous cry out and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their fears. Just like every single day, I thank God for my life because of what he delivered for me from, how he changed me. I didn't change by myself. It was God's grace through his word, just revealing himself to me. 
and as I've given you life and how he blesses me it's just oh it just makes you want to live and love people in 4 Samuel 13 6 David was greatly distressed there was a time that um, the enemy took all David's family, his wives, his kids, all of this. And David was just in bits. And he was crying to the Lord. And it says in 4 Samuel 36, if you just read down there. It said that David encouraged himself in the Lord. You know, there's probably nobody around to encourage you. There's probably nobody around to say, hey, you did a great job today. Well done. You look really nice today. Is there anything I can do for you today? You probably don't have that. Some people are lonely. Are alone. I don't mean lonely. God is always there with you. But don't have people around them. They probably don't have family. Probably not a church around them. Okay. But this is where you have to store yourself up. In God. Store the gift up. Encourage yourself in God. Lord I'm going to live today. What do you want me to do today? I think I'll go out and plant some flowers today. See if they need help down here in this place. Help these people over here. See if they need help. Or will help them paint their house or something like that you know. You know when you're going through things and when you help others, it's very satisfying and rewarding. That's how you know you're walking in the spirit when you walk in love. It's just love. Love fulfills the law. It's like when you walk in love, when you love one another. When you love the Lord God with all your heart, soul, strength and mind. I'm going a bit over time here, but anyway, I'll try and get, get done here. In Deuteronomy 21, the Lord himself goes before you. He'll be with you. He will never leave you or forsake you so if you have people if you don't have people god loves you so much he will always put people in your life to help you encourage in words because that is god every good thing comes down from the father of lights you just have to believe okay and it's not a condemnation thing either okay don't even think that for a second it's just about renewing your mind casting down every thought everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of god and bringing every thought to the obedience to christ so when you get this thought saying oh you're this or, or the feeling of heaviness feeling you don't go by feelings you go by faith not by what's around you and not by how you feel you have to understand that just train yourself and and, and learn that it's something that i had to do every day okay so God is with you and he'll help you. The Holy Spirit is your best friend, your best teacher. And I'm telling you, without the Holy Spirit, I couldn't have done this because it took a while. People dropped me. People left me. People in the church gave up on me. That's absolutely fine. Even people who were meant to be, who I thought were with me, dropped me. I let all these things get to me. But you see, if you lean on God and you know who you are, you know, you, you won't look at these things. And then when you see these people again, you'll be like, oh, hey, how are you? And you won't think of the fact that they hurt you or they left you or they betrayed you. You know, there's even times that people want you to say sorry to them. But they'll never say sorry to you. You have to let stuff like that go, okay? Because you probably never get an apology off somebody. Okay? I just felt I had to say that. In Psalm 30, weeping may endure for a night but joy comes in the morning. I mean, watch your thoughts when you're getting into bed at night time. And first thing in the morning, just remember that. Speak the word, even have a plane on your laptop or your phone or something, you know. But, you know, you can hear the word, but it can just be there. Make sure it's going in. Make sure you're believing it, okay? In Psalm 3, 3. But Lord, you are a shield around me, the glory, the one who lifts my head high. There's so many here. Psalm 42, 11. Why, my soul, are you downcast? David spoke to his soul. So it's like you're feeling heaviness, you're feeling anger, you're feeling pain, rejection. You can say, no, I rebuke that. Get off me. Or if you walk into a room and two people look at each other and reject you. Are you going to go home and cry? Are you going to let that get you? Why? Hey, you are anointed. You are strong. God is with you. Don't let what other people do or say to you drag you down. Not a hope. No way. Why would you do that? Don't let what people say or do negative um, hurtful or harmful ways because that's something in them it's nothing got to do with you so leave them to God pray for them who hurt you for they just live by fate in 2 Corinthians for we walk by fate not by sight um, okay just one more and then I'm really going over time here 
but I have to say this is Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. He has sent me to bind up the broken heart and to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. That he might be glorified. Oh, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You are in Mount Zion. You are victorious. You are here for a reason and God loves you. Do not let the enemy rule you anymore. Step up. You are the head and not the tail. Don't listen to the lies of the enemy anymore. Get up. You know, set goals for yourself. It just it starts with small things as well. You know, like um, get up and, and do your hair. Go and buy something nice for yourself. Treat yourself. Clean your home. Do little tasks, you know, um... Get a notepad and say, right, I'm going to do these things today. I'm going to read the word for this amount of time. It's not like legalism. It's just living life. It's going forward. You know, setting goals for yourself. You know, all these little things, they matter. They really, really do. Okay, and God wants you to live. And he wants you to love him with all your heart, soul, strength and mind. But he wants you to love others. But also, forgive yourself love yourself because you are worth it okay and people need you people need you in their life they need your presence you know they need god yes but look sometimes we forget about ourselves okay to look after ourselves our own well-being our own mind okay and this other thing i can't stand it you know when people um it's whether meetings or churches or women meetings whatever you know and we make out that everything's okay i walk by faith i walk by faith i walk by faith but you're broken on the inside don't ever be afraid to share how you how you're feeling or what you're going through with someone you know i can't stand that down people say oh you've walked by faith or oh, do this or do that it's good to talk because when you get things out as well you know you're healing especially with someone who really does care for you and really wants to help you know, and you know that they're not going to condemn you and bash you, you know. Uh, they'll help you along. But don't depend on people, okay. People are there to help you. We're there for one another, to lift each other, okay. So don't ever be afraid to, to say how you are. It's like um here in Ireland, there's a lot of people, especially men, who take their own lives. I mean, it's just, oh. And you could be talking to them and they seem fine. And then you get the news the next day, you know, they, they hung themselves or... They did this and you're like, oh my God, I was only talking to that person the other day. You know, it's it's people, they're, they're afraid to talk. And I'm not just talking about going to counsellors or psychiatrists. Someone in your family, someone in your church. You know, especially with men, don't be afraid to say something. You know, I try even to answer so many emails from people. You know, and what people are going through. Because... I like that as well. You know, if, if I'm struggling with something, to just say, hey, listen, I need prayer for this. Will you stand with me in agreement for this? Don't ever be afraid to do that. Yes, you have authority. Yes, there's power. Yes, God is there. He never leaves you or forsakes you. But don't be afraid to share what you're going through or if you need help to somebody, okay? Don't bottle things up on the inside. I always say that to my kids. Look, is there anything you want to talk about? I was a teenager once. Do you want to talk about anything? You know, just be real with people. Be real and genuine. But genuinely care for people. Okay? So, I love you all. I hope that blessed you today. And it's just, I really feel that I have to share this. Because um, there's so many who are going through things and feel that they have to stay there. And afraid to share things as well. Okay, so we need to balance it out. We need to be there for each other. And don't ever be afraid to share with people, you know, what you're going through. And if you are struggling in the background and then going around or into church or meeting and saying, yeah, everything's fine, everything's fine, everything's fine. And I've even been told by people, you know, don't say it. Give it to God. No. There's times that I felt so much better when I got things out and then I, I've prayed with a friend. And you're like, oh, that's just like a weight off my shoulders. We need each other. 
God is there and you know that God brings people into your life as well for a reason, okay? So I just really feel like saying that today, okay? And I love you and God loves you so much. And today, make it or whenever it is you're listening to this, make that choice to live, to go forward, change things in your life, be happy, set goals for yourself, treat yourself, do not let yourself go, all right? Whether people have dropped you or not, drop all that, let go of the past, and go forward because God has great plans for your life great things for you just believe it okay so Heavenly Father God Almighty Holy Spirit Jesus Christ thank you for your love for your grace for your kindness and for your word that changes us that transforms us Lord that we mature in you that you love us you care for us even the smallest of things that we go through you love us so deeply God and thank you for that Lord we thank you God Lord I just pray for your people Lord bring people into their lives um, who will help them and um, who will be a voice for them who will put an arm around them Lord lead them to a church to groups wherever it may be Lord in their lives Lord and I pray, Lord, for people, if they're in isolation, Lord God, get them out of it, Lord. Give them the strength, that um, mobility again, that energy. It's only by you, by your grace, God, that you can do this for them. And I come against every lying spirit and I cancel it in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of debt and rejection to leave people in Jesus' name. The spirit of heaviness and loneliness to leave people in Jesus Christ's name. Father, give them the joy. Give them the strength that they need to go forward, Lord, and to let go of the baggage that they have been carrying, Lord, and that they know that you love them, Lord. Give them ears to hear your word, but to believe it, Lord. And I come against every spirit of doubt, every spirit that's trying to attack them in their dreams at night time in Jesus' name. I cancel it. Lord, show them, Lord, that they are royalty, Lord, that they are peculiar people, a precious people, to you God and you love them more than we even know Lord bless them surprise them God in Jesus name wipe away their tears Lord and give them that joy where they just smile and just laugh even if they're by themselves Lord because you love them so deeply and we thank you God Almighty for your love oh Lord we love you so much I give you glory and praise in Jesus name Amen Go forward, you mighty soldier, you. I love you and I will talk to you again soon. God bless.